Welcome to Godly Motivation. Wouldn't everything in life be better if we didn't have to deal with fear? Of course, there are healthy fears that alert us to danger, and these fears are good because they protect us. There is also the fear of God, which means to have a holy, reverential awe and respect for God. But there is a debilitating fear that Satan tries to put on us every day that is intended to keep us from having the power, love, and sound mind that God wants us to have. Psalm 46.1 declares, God is our hope and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. In a world that is constantly changing, where circumstances can shift in an instant, God's presence remains unwavering. God is our refuge and strength, always near, always ready to extend His loving arms of protection. Take a moment to reflect on the comfort that comes from knowing that God is with you, regardless of the circumstances you face. If you woke up this morning with something on your mind, then we invite you to write in the comments below, God is bigger than that, and He will make a way for me. Then click on the like button as we come into agreement. Friends, the profound assurance of God's presence, protection, and guidance is available to us in every season of life. Just as we seek the presence of loved ones during times of joy and sorrow, we should earnestly seek God's presence daily. So spend time in prayer, in meditation, and in scripture reading, inviting God to be at the center of your life. It's in these moments of communion that you will experience God's peace and guidance. Psalm 91.4 says, He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. If you have ever struggled with anxiety, you are familiar with the worry, stress, and feeling of heaviness that comes with it. Many people struggle with fear that has no obvious cause or source. They wonder why they are always afraid and can't change, no matter how hard they try. Others may spend every minute worrying about what might happen next. What if seems to be their favorite phrase. What if I can't pay the bills? What if my child gets hurt? What if my husband loses his job? What if I can't accomplish this by this time. The endless list of possible tragedies or negative outcomes keeps these unfortunate people bound up and miserable every day of their lives. There are many serious things going on in the world, and we need to be aware of them and prepare for them. But we also need to learn to resist fear when it rises up against us. In Scripture, 2 Timothy 1, 7 tells us God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. While we think of fear as an emotion, perhaps we need to realize that fear is actually a spirit. In fact, fear is one of Satan's favorite tools, and he particularly loves to torment Christians with it. At every possible opportunity, he will whisper in your ear, telling you that God has forgotten you and that there is no hope. It makes sense that Satan would try to intimidate us with fear. But Jesus said in Mark 9, 23, everything is possible for one who believes. We have to believe that there is nothing worse for the enemy than an on-fire, Bible-believing Christian who is fearless. God did not promise us that life would be easy. We will all face problems and challenges, but the outcome depends on whether we trust God or whether we give in to fear. Psalm 23, 4 says, Even though I will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. Imagine the loving embrace of a parent shielding his or her child from harm. 
God's protection is like the shelter of His wings, a place of safety and refuge. No matter how fierce the storms of life may be, you can find solace in the fact that God is your protector, covering you with His love and faithfulness. When you feel doubt and are scared or worried, trust in God's faithfulness, knowing that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Even in the darkest moments, God remains by your side, guarding your heart and soul. Though you do have an enemy, you have nothing to fear. The devil has no power over you, none. The moment you gave your life to the Lord, you became a redeemed, forgiven, righteous child of God. Satan, as our enemy, has no rightful place in your life, so don't let him deceive you. The Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper, and God reassures us that we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. As we navigate the complexities of life, it's essential to see God's guidance first. This will help us to make wise choices and discern God's will even when we feel overwhelmed. Trust that God's guidance is like a light that shines on your path, making each step clear and purposeful. God speaks to us in various ways, through His Word, through prayer, and through the still small voice within our hearts. When we listen to God's voice, we receive His guidance, which leads us along the path that He has prepared for us. It's a blessing to know that God is continually directing us toward His perfect will. The Lord will protect you from anything that comes your way, as long as you let Him lead you every morning. That's why it's so important to begin your day with prayer, in faith with God. God is love. We can never say those words enough. The only thing we can add is, and God loves me. Fear is a spirit that must be confronted head on. It will not leave on its own. We must proclaim the word of God and command fear to leave. So, the next time fear knocks on your door, send faith to answer. If you just woke up and your mind starts running, just declare Proverbs 18.10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. And now as we move into our prayer for today, remember that God's presence is your refuge. His protection is your shield and His guidance is your light. Trust in God's unwavering love and rest in the knowledge that He is with you, offering refuge in times of trouble and guidance in times of uncertainty. As we journey through life, seek His presence, trust in His protection, follow His guidance, and surrender to His sovereign will. In doing so, you will experience the profound peace and assurance that come from placing your life in the hands of a loving and faithful God. Rather than living in fear, you can be empowered by God through faith to live a bold, productive life that is filled with happiness and the power of God. You don't ever have to live in worry or doubt, wondering if the enemy is going to defeat you today. The Spirit of God in you is greater than any attack of the enemy, and the Bible itself declares this in 1 John 4.4. 4. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. And now, my friends, we offer our prayer. Dear Lord, today we come before you giving thanks for all that you have done in our lives. We thank you for not giving us a spirit of fear, but instead a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Thank you, God, for the countless ways you have shown your guidance and protection in our lives. We recognize that you are the ultimate source of wisdom and security, and we humbly seek your presence as we navigate the challenges we face today. 
Heavenly Father, for the individual issues each person listening is experiencing today, we choose to lean on your wisdom. Your understanding surpasses our own, and your guidance is perfect. We trust that your plans for our lives are filled with purpose and goodness, and we surrender our own understanding to follow your lead. Psalm 91 verses 1 and 2 assure us that whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Today, we acknowledge that your way is higher than our way. You are God, and we know you cannot lose. We put all of this in your hands today and receive the victory as we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We will share a powerful blessing prayer for your breakthrough this month. Many of us are believing God for something wonderful, for something big, for something we can't even tell our friends or family members about. It can get frustrating. Sometimes we may lose faith and wonder if we are even worthy of the things we are asking God for. But I'm here to tell you today that God is a big God and He can do what no man can do. I'd like every listener today to type something big in the comments below that you are believing God to do in your life. Then, as you stand in faith, I'd like you to click the like button as we come into agreement together. We serve a God who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than we could ever ask or think. I know we are human, and sometimes when we are praying and believing for something big, we often stop because we looked at ourselves and thought, who am I? That could never happen to me. I don't have what it takes to accomplish that. Or we read about the amazing feats of some of the people in the Bible and think, that's great, but they were extraordinary people with remarkable faith and gifts. My friends, too often we limit God because we don't feel we have the resources or the connections or the experience to do something great. We forget that our own victories are not won through our own strength, but by God's gracious hand of favor upon our lives. That's what brings about the extraordinary in our life. Think about the lives of many of the people in the Bible. Joseph, for example, was sold into slavery in Egypt, falsely accused of a crime, spent several years in prison, and yet he became the prime minister of Egypt. Moses was born into slavery. His family had no resources, nothing, and he was supposed to be killed by orders of the Pharaoh. He spent 40 years as a shepherd in the wilderness, yet he led the liberation of two million Israelites from Egypt, even though he felt totally incapable. Nehemiah also lived in exile in Persia and was the cup-bearer to the king. When he heard that the walls of Jerusalem remained broken down and the gates had been burned, he had a desire to go and rebuild the walls. But he had no resources, no money, no expertise, and no influence. He was a cup-bearer, not a cabinet member or a politician with connections. But he prayed and dared to ask the king to send him. The king not only granted Nehemiah the time to take off, but he sent with him the resources and the official papers to do the work. So, how did it happen? Nehemiah 2.8 tells us, Because the gracious hand of my God was on me, and so the walls were rebuilt. Friends, we have big dreams and things we want to accomplish as long as we are alive. But we can become intimidated by our fears, our doubts, our lack of finances, our bad health condition. You need to show God that you trust Him to do what you cannot do. God is looking for men and women who believe they have the favor of God in their life. Let's believe for God to do extraordinary things in our lives. God created you to be special. 
He placed something on your life that gives you the advantage. What's going to bring about the extraordinary in your life is God's gracious hand of favor. Receive His favor today as a free gift, then receive it again tomorrow, and know that you can accomplish extraordinary things in your life. In 1 Kings 17, the prophet Elijah asked a starving widow to do something that seemed selfish. He said, Before you make your final meal from the last of your grain and oil, make me a loaf of bread. But with it came God's promise of overflowing provision if she would keep him first place and do as Elijah asked. God is saying, keep me first place in your life. Let me direct your steps and decisions, and I'll crown your efforts with success. When you wake up in the morning, don't meet with anyone until you first meet with God. Take time to thank God for the day. Thank Him for who He is. Thank Him that He's the giver of all good things, that He is your protector, your provider, your healer, and your way maker. All through the day, under your breath, you can talk to God and say, Lord, thank you for watching over my children. Lord, help me to be my best at work today. Lord, direct me in everything I do and say. In the realm of finances, the pressure of bills, responsibilities, and future planning can be burdensome. The world often teaches us to rely on our efforts alone, but the Bible reassures us that God is our ultimate provider. In Philippians 4.19, we find the powerful promise, And my God will supply every need of yours according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. As we trust God daily for a breakthrough in our finances, let's approach Him with open hearts, surrendering our anxieties and seeking His wisdom in managing our resources. Every day, let us declare His provision over our lives, believing that He is orchestrating financial breakthroughs beyond our understanding. In moments of illness or uncertainty, let us turn to God in prayer, trusting that His healing touch can restore and renew. Embracing healthy habits becomes an act of faith, recognizing that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. As we trust God for big blessings in our health each day, we align ourselves with His promise of restoration and well-being. The plans we often make carry a weight of uncertainty. We want to start that business. We want to move to that country, change careers, send our kids to college, or build that house. Proverbs 16.3 encourages us, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. Trusting God daily for big blessings in our plans involves surrendering our desires to His will. As we wake up each morning, let's commit our plans to God, seeking His guidance and wisdom. Trusting Him as our guide means being open to detours and changes, confident that His purpose will prevail. In the journey of trusting God for big blessings in our plans, we find assurance that He is directing our steps. Trusting God daily for big blessings in our businesses means recognizing that success comes from His favor. In the hustle of the entrepreneurial world, let's pause each day to seek God's guidance. Whether it's making decisions, forming partnerships, or navigating challenges, Trust God as the source of your success. Some of us are going through hell in our relationships with our spouse, our kids, our parents, our friends, you name it. The challenges are unbelievable and we can easily become frustrated. But guess what? God is bigger than those problems and He can make a way where there seems to be no way. Romans 8:28 assures us, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Trusting God daily for big blessings in our relationships means surrendering our interactions to His divine purpose. 
As we face the complexities of human connections, let's trust God to guide our words, actions, and reactions. Forgiveness and love become powerful instruments in our relationships, reflecting God's grace in our lives. Each day, let's entrust our relationships to God, believing that He is working for our good and the good of those we love. Listeners, let's remember that life is not easy, but that is why it is much more difficult to attempt it without God's help. Trusting God for breakthroughs in different areas of our lives every day is not a one-time decision, but a continuous journey. It's about waking up each morning with an expectation that God's favor, provision, healing, guidance, and love will manifest in significant ways. This journey requires an intentional choice to trust God, to release our grip on control, and to embrace His plans and purposes. It's a daily surrender, a recognition that we are not navigating the challenges of life alone, but with the Creator of the universe by our side. As we begin this day and look to favor for the rest of the coming days, Let's remember to lean not on our own understanding. In all our ways, submit to God and let Him direct our path. As we seek God first and pray this upcoming prayer, we can expect breakthroughs and to see the hand of God move as we stand in faith, as we trust God daily, and as we believe that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And now, friends, as we come to our prayer for today, I first invite every listener who is not subscribed to click the subscribe button so that you can get all of our new devotionals every day. And then remember to click on that like button as we begin this prayer in faith together. And now, our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads and humble our hearts before you, We come with a deep yearning for your presence and a sincere desire for breakthroughs in our lives. O Lord, this season carries with it the weight of our hopes, dreams, and challenges, and we invite you to show up in a mighty way. Grant us breakthroughs in our finances, health, relationships, and plans. In this moment of prayer, We lean on your promises, knowing that you are a God of abundance, healing, love, and purpose. Gracious provider, we lay our financial concerns before you. Many people listening today are struggling with their finances. Some are retired, some are out of a job, some are trying just to find the money for the next meal. Lord, You see the bills, responsibilities, and uncertainties, and we know we cannot do all of this on our own. We trust in your promise from Philippians 4, 19. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Lord, our trust in you is our anchor in the storm of financial challenges. We ask for breakthroughs, not just for ourselves, but for the ability to be generous, to bless others as you have blessed us. Help us to steward our resources wisely, guiding us to make sound financial decisions. Open the doors of opportunity, provide unexpected provisions, and may your favor surround our financial endeavors. May our reliance upon you be a testimony to your faithfulness, and may also the breakthrough in our finances be a testament to your abundance. O Divine Healer, we bring before you our bodies, our temples that house your spirit. Many people have been having health challenges in various forms. You see the medical reports, the silent prayers, and the frustrated hearts, O Lord, In moments of sickness, uncertainty, and pain, we ask you for a mighty move to restore health and heal wounds in the name of Jesus. We declare that physical and emotional well-being will be restored in the name of Jesus. We claim healing, 
and we speak favor and restoration over every dead situation, over every painful limb, over every cell in our bodies. We command them to be restored and healed in the name of Jesus. O Lord, you are a God who is still in the miracle working business, and we stand in faith, believing that there is no distance in prayer. Your promise in Jeremiah 30, 17 says, For I will restore health to you, and your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord. We declare your word to come to life in our situations today, in Jesus' name. May your healing touch bring restoration and renewal. Guide us in adopting habits that honor the bodies you have entrusted to us. In the journey toward health, may we find strength in your sustaining grace. O God of love, relationships are a cornerstone of our lives, and we lift them up to you. In the complexities of family, friendships, and partnerships, we all seek breakthroughs. Your word in Colossians 3.14 guides us. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Grant us breakthroughs in love, understanding, and unity. O Lord, where there are fractures, where people may be hurt, where hearts may be broken, may your healing love mend. Where there is discord, may your peace reign. Teach us to forgive as you have forgiven us, and let your love be the guiding force in our interactions. May our relationships be a reflection of your grace, bringing joy, comfort, and strength to those around us. O oh, wise counselor, as we lay out our plans before you, we recognize that your ways are higher than our ways. We commit our plans to you, knowing that you will establish our steps. In the uncertainty of our aspirations and dreams, we seek breakthroughs in alignment with your perfect will. Lord, unfold your divine purpose in our plans. If our goals align with your greater design, let them prosper. If they don't, lovingly redirect our paths. Grant us discernment to recognize your leading and courage to follow it, even when it takes us into the unknown. May our plans be vessels for your glory, bringing breakthroughs that magnify your name. Heavenly Father, as we conclude this prayer, we rest in assurance that you are attentive to the cries of your children. Your word reassures us, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. In every aspect of our lives, we place our trust in your unwavering love. We thank you for the breakthroughs that are already in motion, unseen but deeply felt in the Spirit. May our faith in your power be strengthened, and may the breakthroughs in our finances, health, relationships, and plans be a testimony to your grace and mercy. As we navigate this season, may our hearts remain open to your leading, our ears attentive to your whispers, and our spirits aligned with your will. Grant us the courage to step out in faith, knowing that you go before us. In your mighty name we pray, Amen. We all have times in our lives when we are at a disadvantage. We feel as though life is unfair, even though we are praying and we are staying faithful. As the days go by and as you wake up each morning, sometimes you sit and you think and you don't see how we can accomplish our dreams. You may not feel as though you can go to work today. You may not feel as though you can manage the bills this weekend. Sometimes you are feeling pains in your body and you don't know what else to do. In these times, sometimes you feel as though anxiety is kicking in and it is tempting to get discouraged and settle wherever you are. But there is a supernatural flow that you can tap into. Some of us may know and some of us may not know and some of us, even though we know, sometimes we forget that there is a God who is able to turn things around. 
There is a flow of healing that will turn the medical reports around. There is a flow of favor that will open doors and bring the right people into your life. There is a flow of freedom that will bring each addiction to an end. This flow is within reach and you will see the goodness of God in your life. It has to be activated by expecting God's favor. Regardless of what your circumstance is, practice to expect God's favor even in the bad times. Declare his promises. Believe that he is working even when you don't see any sign of it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In Mark 5, there was once this lady who had a bleeding disorder for 12 years. I know many women right now can resonate with this because they sometimes struggle to stop bleeding even after one month. But this woman in the Bible, she had spent all her money on the best doctors, but she was told that her illness was untreatable. Many people even listening to this message right now have things that the doctor has told them is untreatable. So one day, this woman heard that Jesus was passing through the town and something came alive inside of her. Her faith rose up, regardless of how she felt, regardless of what the doctor report said, and regardless of what her situation was, her faith took a stand. She left her house determined to push through the crowds and get to Jesus. She had to push through all the doubts that were telling her that it would not happen. The doubts that were telling her that she is wasting her time. The doubts that said this situation has been going on for 12 years and even the experts cannot find a response. So stop trying. Those doubts came up to her. But Mark 5 verse 28 says, She kept saying to herself, when I get to Jesus, I will be healed. She reached out, touched the edge of his robe, and was instantly healed. Jesus looked at her and said, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Your faith initiated this flow of healing. You activated this miracle to happen. So what does that tell us today? Regardless of our circumstances, we will know that God is a good God. We will know that God is a miracle worker. We will know that he can do the supernatural, but we still feel doubt sometimes. But what does the Lord say? He says, your faith has made you well. Your faith initiated this flow of healing and you yourself can activate this miracle to happen. I wonder if there are some divine flows that you're missing out on because you're not activating them. If you have something that you want God to do for you today, if you need a flow of healing, a flow of financial breakthrough, whatever it is, I want you to open your mouth and say, I activate miracles into my life today. I activate miracles into my life today. Friends, we all have these situations and we know what God can do, but don't just sit with the knowledge. Open your mouth and speak. Speak favor, speak healing, speak deliverance. You have to stretch out your faith. Believe for what you are dreaming about. Declare his promises in spite of what's not changing. You have to press past the doubt. You have to push past all the negative thoughts that are telling you that things will not change. His promises are yes and amen. And whatever the enemy sends for bad, God can turn it around for good. It is never going to happen if you don't open your mouth and show God that you have faith and that you are ready to activate healing, activate a breakthrough, activate a change in your situation. Push past the naysayers who tell you what you cannot become. Push past the naysayers that say you are crazy. Push past the ones who say that you need to listen to what the doctors say. My friends, your faith can make you well. God is saying today, come on, activate my power, activate my favor, 
activate my healing. So keep believing, keep expecting, keep declaring that God can do what seems impossible. I want you to type in the comments below, God can do the impossible in my life. Keep declaring that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you can even ask or think. Whenever you activate this flow, angels go to work. Forces of darkness are broken. Favor is released. You are on the verge of activating a supernatural flow, a supernatural power that you've never seen before. Keep saying to yourself, healing is coming. Freedom is coming. Abundance is coming. This is the day that the Lord has made and my friends, we need to rejoice and be glad in it. God is doing a brand new thing. As you begin your day today, do not go into this day thinking about your problems or thinking about your worries or thinking about the issues or the reports or the lack of funding. The Lord is able to do exceedingly more than you can think or imagine. For each listener today, I want you to click on the like button as a sign of coming into agreement that God is about to do something supernatural in your lives today. My friends, we can hold ourselves back or we can push ourselves forward. When God brings blessings on your life, someone will be jealous and they will try to stir up trouble. Stay on the high road. Don't pay attention to the criticism of small-minded people. When you refuse to get bent out of shape, nothing can keep you from the abundance that belongs to you. As children of God, we are designed to experience blessings that go beyond the natural realm. In order to access these blessings, we must first understand the source. All blessings, whether natural or supernatural, they flow from God. James 1 verse 17 reminds us, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So supernatural blessings are no exception. They originate in the heart of our unchanging God. Accessing them requires a posture of surrender and trust. We naturally believe that we can find the solutions on our own. As we grow in life, we learn to be more dependent on ourselves. We learn how to stop using training wheels and stop depending on our parents. But there comes a point in life where we have to understand that all good gifts come from God. And while we are able to do certain things on our own, when it comes on to the supernatural, we need the presence of the Lord. Psalm 37 and verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. When we do this, we find joy and satisfaction in His presence when we seek Him above all things. When we delight ourselves in the Lord, we align ourselves with His will. So the things that you want, you may want a million dollars in your bank account. You may want healing today. You may be trying to find your husband, trying to find your wife, trying to have your business take off. But God's plans align with the things that you have in your heart. It may not be the way you want it. It may not be the person you want it with. And it may not be the business that you thought about first. But these things all align with the big plans he has for you. But the best way to align yourself is to seek his word. Seek Him in prayer and create the conditions for supernatural blessings to flow in our lives when we align our will with His will. Faith is the key that unlocks the door to supernatural blessings. Hebrews 11 and verse 6 states, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. So faith is not mere belief. It is an unwavering trust in God's character and promises, even when the pains are rocking your body, even when the bank account is on empty, even when your relationships are going downhill, God does not change. The enemy wants us to stay frustrated and hate God when things go wrong. 
but prayer is our direct line to the supernatural realm where we can lay our requests before our Heavenly Father. Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7 encourages us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So when we pray and present our petitions to God, we acknowledge our dependence on Him, and this allows Him to see our hearts and know that we are trusting Him even in the bad times. So as we get into our prayer for today, I simply ask you to lay your requests before God. Feel free to type out in the comment section something you are believing God for and remember to click the like button so we show a sign of agreement as we pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your magnificent presence with hearts full of gratitude and reverence. You are the God of all goodness and the source of supernatural blessings beyond our understanding. Today we lift our voices and we lift our requests to you in prayer. You see all the people gathered on this video today. I ask that you touch them individually wherever they are in the world and you see the requests below in the comment section. Lord, I ask that you touch each person's situation today. We are coming to you in faith and believing that you can provide a supernatural blessing and miracle in each of our situations. Lord, you are the author of all goodness. Your word assures us in Psalm 34 and verse 8 that taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him so we hunger and we thirst for your goodness today for in it we find refuge blessings and an abundant life we recognize that you have no limits and your blessings are boundless so your goodness father god we ask that you extend it to every era of our lives those of us who are seeking healing today your word tells us in jeremiah 30 verse 17 for i will restore health to you and your wounds i will heal declares the lord so we bring before you any sickness any pain any infirmity in our lives and ask for your healing touch to bring restoration and wholeness for those of us having issues in our relationships Lord, we desire your supernatural blessings of love, of unity, and of reconciliation. We ask for your divine intervention to mend broken relationships and to pour out your love upon us, so we may love others as you have loved us. Lord, in moments of doubt and despair, when we feel as though we don't have the finances to take care of our responsibilities, we ask that you open a door for us in the name of Jesus. We cancel every plan of the enemy to let us feel as though we are less than, to let us feel as though we will not move forward. The blood of Jesus is against every attack of the enemy that tries to stand up in front of our self-esteem. We tear it down in the name of Jesus and we speak miracles, we speak strength, we speak a breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, every roadblock is cleared. We cancel every plan of the enemy that tries to stand in the way of our miracle today. And we declare and decree that we will see your goodness even in the midst of trials. Lord, we thank you for all you are doing. We thank you for all you have done. And we thank you for all that you will do. We trust that you can turn every challenge into an opportunity to reveal your goodness and your faithfulness today. As we close this prayer, we declare your goodness over our lives. We declare your goodness over our families, over our neighbors, over our co-workers, over our relationships, over our bank accounts, over our bodies, over our plans, in the name of Jesus. May we see your goodness in every circumstance and may we experience your blessings in abundance and may your name be glorified through our lives as we testify to your supernatural goodness. We all have times in our lives when we are at a disadvantage. We feel as though life is unfair even though we are praying and we are staying faithful. As the days go by and as you wake up each morning, sometimes you sit and you think and you don't see how we can accomplish our dreams. 
You may not feel as though you can go to work today. You may not feel as though you can manage the bills this weekend. Sometimes you are feeling pains in your body and you don't know what else to do. In these times, sometimes you feel as though anxiety is kicking in and it is tempting to get discouraged and settle wherever you are. But there is a supernatural flow that you can tap into. Some of us may know and some of us may not know. And some of us, even though we know, sometimes we forget that there is a God who is able to turn things around. There is a flow of healing that will turn the medical reports around. There is a flow of favor that will open doors and bring the right people into your life. There is a flow of freedom that will bring each addiction to an end. This flow is within reach and you will see the goodness of God in your life. It has to be activated by expecting God's favor. Regardless of what your circumstance is, practice to expect God's favor even in the bad times. Declare his promises. Believe that he is working even when you don't see any sign of it. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In Mark 5, there was once this lady who had a bleeding disorder for 12 years. I know many women right now can resonate with this because they sometimes struggle to stop bleeding even after one month. But this woman in the Bible, she had spent all her money on the best doctors, but she was told that her illness was untreatable. Many people even listening to this message right now have things that the doctor has told them is untreatable. So one day, this woman heard that Jesus was passing through the town and something came alive inside of her. Her faith rose up, regardless of how she felt, regardless of what the doctor report said, and regardless of what her situation was, her faith took a stand. She left her house, determined to push through the crowds and get to Jesus. She had to push through all the doubts that were telling her that it would not happen. The doubts that were telling her that she is wasting her time. The doubts that said, this situation has been going on for 12 years and even the experts cannot find a response, so stop trying. Those doubts came up to her. But Mark 5 verse 28 says, She kept saying to herself, When I get to Jesus, I will be healed. She reached out, touched the edge of his robe, and was instantly healed. Jesus looked at her and said, daughter your faith has made you well your faith initiated this flow of healing you activated this miracle to happen so what does that tell us today regardless of our circumstances we will know that god is a good god we will know that god is a miracle worker we will know that he can do the supernatural but we still feel doubt sometimes but what does the lord say he says, your faith has made you well. Your faith initiated this flow of healing and you yourself can activate this miracle to happen. I wonder if there are some divine flows that you're missing out on because you're not activating them. If you have something that you want God to do for you today, if you need a flow of healing, a flow of financial breakthrough, Whatever it is, I want you to open your mouth and say, I activate miracles into my life today. I activate miracles into my life today. Friends, we all have these situations and we know what God can do. But don't just sit with the knowledge. Open your mouth and speak. Speak favor. Speak healing. Speak deliverance. You have to stretch out your faith, believe for what you are dreaming about, declare his promises in spite of what's not changing. You have to press past the doubt. You have to push past all the negative thoughts that are telling you that things will not change. 
his promises are yes and amen and whatever the enemy sends for bad god can turn it around for good it is never going to happen if you don't open your mouth and show god that you have faith and that you are ready to activate healing activate a breakthrough activate a change in your situation push past the naysayers who tell you what you cannot become push past the naysayers that say you are crazy pushed past the ones who say that you need to listen to what the doctors say. My friends, your faith can make you well. God is saying today, come on, activate my power, activate my favor, activate my healing. So keep believing, keep expecting, keep declaring that God can do what seems impossible. I want you to type in the comments below, God can do the impossible in my life. Keep declaring that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than you can even ask or think. Whenever you activate this flow, angels go to work. Forces of darkness are broken. Favor is released. You are on the verge of activating a supernatural flow, a supernatural power that you've never seen before. Keep saying to yourself, healing is coming, freedom is coming, abundance is coming. This is the day that the Lord has made and my friends, we need to rejoice and be glad in it. God is doing a brand new thing. As you begin your day today, do not go into this day thinking about your problems or thinking about your worries or thinking about the issues or the reports or the lack of funding. The Lord is able to do exceedingly more than you can think or imagine. For each listener today, I want you to click on the like button as a sign of coming into agreement that God is about to do something supernatural in your lives today. My friends, we can hold ourselves back or we can push ourselves forward. When God brings blessings on your life, someone will be jealous and they will try to stir up trouble. Stay on the high road. Don't pay attention to the criticism of small-minded people. When you refuse to get bent out of shape, nothing can keep you from the abundance that belongs to you. As children of God, we are designed to experience blessings that go beyond the natural realm. In order to access these blessings, we must first understand the source. All blessings, whether natural or supernatural, they flow from God. James 1 verse 17 reminds us, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So supernatural blessings are no exception. They originate in the heart of our unchanging God. Accessing them requires a posture of surrender and trust. We naturally believe that we can find the solutions on our own. As we grow in life, we learn to be more dependent on ourselves. We learn how to stop use training wheels and stop depending on our parents. But there comes a point in life where we have to understand that all good gifts come from God. And while we are able to do certain things on our own, when it comes on to the supernatural, we need the presence of the Lord. Psalm 37 and verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. When we do this, we find joy and satisfaction in His presence when we seek Him above all things. When we delight ourselves in the Lord, we align ourselves with His will. So the things that you want, you may want a million dollars in your bank account. You may want healing today. You may be trying to find your husband, trying to find your wife, trying to have your business take off. But God's plans align with the things that you have in your heart. It may not be the way you want it. It may not be the person you want it with. And it may not be the business that you thought about first. But these things all align with the big plans he has for you. But the best way to align yourself is to seek his word. Seek him in prayer and create the conditions for supernatural blessings to flow in our lives when we align our will with his will. Faith is the key 
that unlocks the door to supernatural blessings. Hebrews 11 and verse 6 states, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. So faith is not mere belief. It is an unwavering trust in God's character and promises, even when the pains are rocking your body, even when the bank account is on empty, even when your relationships are going downhill, God does not change. The enemy wants us to stay frustrated and hate God when things go wrong, but prayer is our direct line to the supernatural realm where we can lay our requests before our Heavenly Father. Philippians 4 verses 6 and 7 encourages us, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So when we pray and present our petitions to God, we acknowledge our dependence on Him, and this allows Him to see our hearts and know that we are trusting Him even in the bad times. So as we get into our prayer for today, I simply ask you to lay your requests before God. Feel free to type out in the comment section something you are believing God for, and remember to click the like button so we show a sign of agreement as we pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your magnificent presence with hearts full of gratitude and reverence. You are the God of all goodness and the source of supernatural blessings beyond our understanding. Today we lift our voices and we lift our requests to you in prayer. You see all the people gathered on this video today. I ask that you touch them individually wherever they are in the world, and you see the requests below in the comment section. Lord, I ask that you touch each person's situation today. We are coming to you in faith and believing that you can provide a supernatural blessing and miracle in each of our situations. Lord, you are the author of all goodness. Your word assures us in Psalm 34 and verse 8 that taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. So we hunger and we thirst for your goodness today, for in it we find refuge, blessings, and an abundant life. We recognize that you have no limits and your blessings are boundless. So your goodness, Father God, we ask that you extend it to every era of our lives. Those of us who are seeking healing today, your word tells us in Jeremiah 30 verse 17, For I will restore health to you, and your wounds I will heal, declares the Lord. So we bring before you any sickness, any pain, any infirmity in our lives, and ask for your healing touch to bring restoration and wholeness. For those of us having issues in our relationships, Lord, we desire your supernatural blessings of love, of unity, and of reconciliation. We ask for your divine intervention to mend broken relationships and to pour out your love upon us, so we may love others as you have loved us. Lord, in moments of doubt and despair, when we feel as though we don't have the finances to take care of our responsibilities, we ask that you open a door for us in the name of Jesus. We cancel every plan of the enemy to let us feel as though we are less than, to let us feel as though we will not move forward. The blood of Jesus is against every attack of the enemy that tries to stand up in front of our self-esteem. We tear it down in the name of Jesus and we speak miracles, we speak strength, we speak a breakthrough. In the name of Jesus, every roadblock is cleared. We cancel every plan of the enemy that tries to stand in the way of our miracle today. And we declare and decree that we will see your goodness even in the midst of trials. Lord, we thank you for all you are doing. We thank you for all you have done. And we thank you for all that you will do. We trust that you can turn every challenge into an opportunity to reveal your goodness and your faithfulness today. As we close this prayer, we declare your goodness over our lives. We declare your goodness over our families, 
over our neighbors, over our co-workers, over our relationships, over our bank accounts, over our bodies, over our plans, in the name of Jesus. May we see your goodness in every circumstance, and may we experience your blessings in abundance, and may your name be glorified through our lives as we testify to your supernatural goodness. We pray all these things in the mighty and precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who embodies your goodness and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you've made it to the end of this prayer, we just simply ask you to click the like button and go ahead and subscribe if you have not done so already. Please share this video with someone, share it on your social media, share it with a family member or a friend today who may need a blessing today. Thanks again for tuning into Godly Motivation and we trust that you will have yourself a blessed and a wonderful rest of your day.